Fellowship. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be. Amen. Amen. And happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Let's give the Lord a word of prayer. Dear Lord, this day, like every day of our lives, we're just so thankful that we can come boldly and freely to your throne room. Dear Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you pour out upon us. And we just ask, dear Lord, that you would receive all the honor and glory today. This is your day as every day is. Thank you for what you provide in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. Happy Mother's Day! Thank you. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day! Thank you! <laughs> Same to you! <laughs> Should I use my old line? Let me try it one time, see what kind of response I get here. Karen would not be a mom if not for me. Okay, I thought that's where they go. You're gonna lose this battle, buddy. <laughs> my mom used to get out of my kitchen. Did you, what'd you get Karen for Mother's Day? I said, uh, two children. Did you get her a card? I'm like, no, she's not my mom. You're my mom. You, get, you need to get the mother and children a card. I used to get chewed out every year for that kind of stuff. And then I got an out. As long as I don't miss Karen's birthday, I'm good. Okay, I can miss Mother's Day. I can miss Christmas. I can miss all those days. But if I miss her birthday, okay, you'll probably see me in a body cast. I did that once. First Kings, chapter 3. You'll probably see me in a body cast. I did miss her birthday one year. That's why I'm saying that. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> oh, no. I remembered the anniversary, forgot the birthday. Doesn't work. My, my wife told me, she said, you can forget anniversary or anything else. Don't forget my birthday. I don't forget her birthday. Moms are gifts. They really are. Moms are great to have. Uh, moms we know aren't, aren't perfect either. But in our eyes, they are, uh, moreover than not. But moms are just, uh, are just great things. And the scripture is full of some wonderful moms. You know, Hannah with Samuel. You had Ruth that ultimately became the grandmother of King David. And uh, you got Elizabeth, uh, who's John the Baptist's mom. And of course, you know, we have Mary who uh, gave the virgin birth to Christ. We have, but the Bible is full of moms and great moms. But I'm going to talk about moms that just know <laughs> and you'll you'll understand when i go through that and the reason i've said that is just you know moms just know things and nothing against dads but what dads will miss moms just know is when dads we can even get away with things but dads moms just know isn't that amazing it kind of makes you think like well, what was my mom doing that she knows all this stuff <laughs> So that's why I mean, there are no perfect moms out there. Obviously, you know, moms had journeys in their lives where they knew what kind of kids they were going to get, and they prepared. But let's read the scripture. Let's go to chapter 3 of 1 Kings, starting verse 16. I'm going to read through verse 28. I love this, these verses. Uh, there's so many different ways. Uh, but I'm going to come back to one verse as we read through here. Are you ready? Chapter 3, 1 Kings. Solomon had just been blessed by God with uh, an amazing amount of wisdom because that's all he asked for. 
uh, and the first case he gets to deal with are two despondent mothers that are arguing and debating with one another. And I don't know if you're like me, I don't know if I'd want to deal with that, that kind of scenario first off. Because back in those days, that's what people did. They brought the worst case, just like we bring our big cases to our Supreme Court. Back in those days, they brought their big cases between, before the king. And the king made the decision based on what evidence he was given on what the outcome would be. Let's read the scripture. Starting in verse 16, chapter 3, 1 Kings. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. We were alone. There was no one else in the house. Only we two were in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your servant slept and laid him at her breast and laid her dead son in my breast. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my child before he was dead, uh, be behold, he was dead. But then I looked at him closely in the morning. Behold, he was not the child that I had born. But the other woman said, no, the living child is mine, and the dead child is yours. The first, said, child, the first woman said, no, the dead child is yours, and the living is mine. And thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, the one says, this is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is dead, and my, king, or my son is the living one. And the king said, Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and the other half to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because her heart yearned for her son, O oh my lord, give her the living child. By no means put him to death. But the other said, He shall neither be mine nor yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, Give the living child to the first woman, and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king, because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. Let's pray. Father God, we celebrate this time with our moms. We thank you for our moms. Father, and, and the moms you've given us, we thank you. We're grateful for them. We truly are. We know they're not perfect, but Father, they will walk a walk where most others will not. They see most things that others cannot. And Father, as you see all things, you seem to give our moms a special gift that no one seems to get away with anything with moms. And we thank you for that. Father, speak to hearts as we celebrate this day but yet give you the honor and the glory and the praise in everything. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we could do a lot of things with these verses, couldn't we? They were prostitutes for one thing. Oh, my goodness. And we could go all through those things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to verse uh, 21, if you will, back up with me. I thought it was interesting. As many times as I've read this, and I read back through here, it said, When I rose in the morning, this is the first mom. When I rose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, behold, it was not the child that I had born. And I thought that was pretty interesting, uh, considering, you know, newborns that close together, I don't know, but, you know, moms just know. Moms just know. And the difference between these two ladies is one had the heart of a mom. There's a difference. There's some moms out there who don't have the heart of a mom. And we know that. But one of these women had the heart of a mom. How can we tell the difference? Because of her willingness to sacrifice. The other one had no willingness to sacrifice to give anything. She said, you know, kill the kid. So none of us. You know, you, had, you ever had friends like that? Or boyfriends. How many of you had boyfriends that you broke up with a boyfriend and tried to make your life miserable every time you tried to date somebody else? He didn't want you, but he didn't want someone else to have you? Kind of the same analogy here, isn't it? 
She didn't have the child, so she wanted this other woman miserable. She was so willing to kill. That's how the king made the decision, because he based it on a mother's heart. She knew. She took one look at her child and knew that, wait a minute, something's not right. This is not my child. A mom can look into your eyes and know, can't they? Isn't it amazing? How many have tried to lie to mom? Everybody in here. <laughs> Everybody in here. How many have thought that you've come up with the most best lie to tell your mom and you didn't get away with it? You know, how do moms know this? They just know. They can look you in the eyes and just see some things. And I just thought it was kind of a neat analogy. When I came back to that, it just came to me. Moms just know. There's no mistake. I thought I was the slickest of slick. And, you know, you don't, you know, I'm going to be nice. Going to school, you need lunch money. You forgot to ask your mom the night before, dad the night before. And, and so now you've got to sneak in your mom's bedroom, quietly open her purse, and borrow a couple of dollars. Now, I was different. That's how my son learned to belly crawl. Swear to God, true story, if there was a video in my house, you would see me crawling down the hall. Man, I'd get down there and I'd crawl, and creepy crawl on the carpet, and I'd ease her door open. I couldn't even hear it. And I'd slip in her dark bedroom, and I'd open her purse really quiet, and I'd reach in there and get the money out. And as soon as I got to her bedroom door, she goes, how much did you take? <laughs> And the amazing thing was, I just didn't smarten up. I just kept trying to do it that way because I was bound and determined. But my mom just knew. She just knew. But a neat story that I was told for years, and I wanted to share this when, I, when we were thinking about moms. Back in World War II, we know that uh, a lot of things happened. And the war was going on long before we got into it in the 40s in Europe. Europe was being conquered. Uh, Poland being one of those nations, one of the, I think, first nations uh, uh, that Germany went in and conquered. And they wiped out a lot of people. Well, parents were separated from their children in those days. And to keep children safe, moms had to send their children off uh, to like Paris and different places. And there were, time would pass. I mean, after the war, some of these moms waited. Well, this one mom waited nine years. Didn't know where her son was except in France in an orphanage and stuff. And she was told, she said, you have to go to France to this orphanage and pick your child. Now think about that. Nine years have passed, the turmoil of war. Now she's got to go pick out her child after nine years. And I'm thinking, wow, that would, that would be difficult for us as dads probably. Because we're going to, you know, what are we going to look at? Yeah, he's just kind of skinny. He's kind of short. You know, even if you could probably walk past your kids and say, yeah, he looks like me, but I don't want that one. <laughs> You know, well, he's kind of muscular. He probably, now nah, he looks like my sass, and I don't want to have, have that kind of trouble. No, his mom won't like him or her. Now, nah, you know, that's what we would do. Moms don't do that. This particular mom went to Paris nine years later, picked her son out of hundreds of kids that were separated from their parents. And that was my uncle. My uncle had, who I had the privilege of teaching his funeral. They, as a child, he can remember crawling over dead bodies, and that was his memory as a kid. But then he got separated, he got torn from his parents, and that was one thing to save his life. So even Polish people got thrown into concentration camps and were tortured and killed because they were not good enough to survive the Nazi Reich. But that always amazed me, and that was one thing that impressed my uncle so much, and the reverence and respect he showed his mother. Now, he wasn't a very respectful reverend guy, don't get me wrong, but when it came to his mother, and I can imagine that his mom was somewhat like this mom right here. As she was walking down those aisles looking at those children, what do you think she was looking at? Their eyes. And I know dad helps in the process of making a child, but moms just know. When she was walking down, she just walked up and she hit my uncle Ed and she said, He's my son. And took him home. And I just always thought that was a neat story. And when I was thinking about this, I'm like, you know, moms just know. We don't get away with stuff. And I know we can have fun. But history just tells us there's other moms that probably went through the same things. Moms just know. Now, there's also, you know, you've seen two analogies in here. There's 
We have women with just plain old mom's hearts in our congregation. And sometimes I think even those women struggle because, well, I couldn't have children. I couldn't. No, you have a special gift because you have to have a heart that goes sometimes beyond a mother's heart when you take someone else's child in to care for them. And I think those are tremendous gifts that are expounded in Scripture. This woman was willing to what? Sacrifice her child that he might live some whatever kind of life that God had planned for him. And I thought that was interesting when you're reading down through there. She knew that her son was not dead. And then when, she, when it started coming down to it, she was like, you know something? I'm willing to give my child up. How do you think the king made his decision? Based on the heart of a mom. There's no greater heart and no more sacrifice. Dads don't sacrifice. And I know on Father's Day we'll do something different. <laughs> it makes it sound like I'm being mean with dads. But dads don't sacrifice like moms do. My dad was a grumpy old dude. He drank, fought, he was always, he was terrible. He was not a good dad. I love my dad now, but he was a terrible father. He wasn't a father. Terrible father. But if not for my mother, you know, she would step up and step in. My mom would get in almost fistfights with my dad to make sure that we kids could have some things. Because my dad didn't feel things were necessary. Bell-bottom pants came out. All my friends had bell-bottom pants weeks and months before I ever had bell-bottom. My dad said that those were unnecessary because those are girl pants. <laughs> and I'm not going to have my son walk around looking like a girl, blah, 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 blah. But my mom made sure that we were in style. Yeah, aren't moms funny? They want you styling and profiling. They don't want you going out there looking like some funky monkey, do they? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We want to go out with holes in our pants and holes in our shoes and it doesn't matter. We don't want to change. We want to wear the dirty clothes because that's the cool thing. Moms won't let you out the door, will they? Moms will almost kill you right there. Because it's not a matter of that you're offensive to people. It's a matter of what people are going to think of mom. I can't believe what kind of woman would let a child leave a house like that. My goodness gracious. Moms know that. We try to get away with it. I mean, have people took clothes and hid them outside the house so you could change into your cool clothes. You really didn't do that? I had cool clothes. I mean, my clothes were so cool that if they weren't clean, I would wash them first thing in the morning and wear them wet to school. Now, my mom wasn't real hip on that because when she found out on that kind of stuff, I heard about it on the way home. But moms just know what you're going to go through. But moms have a heart that go far beyond most things. It's just like this woman's heart. I, I love it when she looked at that child. One thing about moms is they will look you in the face and they love you in spite of you. They do. They just love you in spite of you. You can be being nasty, sassy, all those kind of things, but moms love you. They might knock your head off. But they love you sometimes in spite of you. And when all else ends and all else fails, moms will be there. You look at today's, you look at today's families, moms are there in most cases. Dads, we don't know where half of them guys are. You ask a guy about responsibility, he looks at you like, well, I got up and went to work this morning. You know, and some of them are thinking, I don't know where they get that kind of stuff from. But I blame us, us older guys, for not teaching them the right ways to do things. You know, it's not just mom's responsibility to raise that kid up, but that's what happens sometimes. You know, that's what happens sometimes. But the neat thing is, is you're not going to get away with anything, and that's what I like. Moms know you. They look at you. They know you. Because you know why? Because you're a miniature them. Or you're a reincarnation of them. They know. I just want you to know, moms, we don't think, moms, we're teenagers. Believe it or not. Some of you don't believe that, huh? You look at your mom and say, hey, 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 You know, but moms actually were teenagers one time. Ask them how they dressed before they went to school. Can you imagine wearing bobby socks and pants rolled up to your, to your shins here, you know, and, and these, uh, what do you call them, uh, shoes that were white and black and... Ooh. My mom showed me pictures of stuff. I was like, ooh, that looks dumb. Now, she know, now you know why they don't want to send you out looking like you do. Because they look back at those pictures and say, yeah, I don't want my child looking like that. 
You know, Dad's kind of like, is he dressed? I just go go home to my dad once. Mr. Scott, I need to talk to you. Okay. Your son wears the same clothes every day. And my dad's response was, did he stink? Did he have holes in them? Were they clean? Well, yes, sir. Then don't call me no more. <laughs> really, true story. Don't call me no more. When he's in the school, you take care of him in school. When he gets home, we take care of him home. Now, if they'd have got a hold of my mom, I'm sure that my clothes would hit the shredder. Okay, we're going to take care of the black pants, black shoes, black socks, black t shirt They're gone. We're going to take care of those things. Because you know why? Because they don't want to be embarrassed. But they love you through these things anyhow. And whenever we try to get some, if you want to get through something, never look your mom in the face. I think Mother's Day is a day to have fun, don't you? Because there's a bunch of kids out there saying, really, I didn't know that. Don't look them in the face. No, don't make eye contact with your mother <laughs> if you want to get away with something. And kids never learn that, do they? Because you know why? Because you're going to outdo your mom. Okay, I'll show her. I can. Hey, yeah, I'm going out tonight. And I'll be back at midnight, I promise, Mom. And your mom's like, yeah, right. <laughs> Got them lying eyes. So what you need to do is, and I'm giving you some bad pointers, tell your mom as you're going out the door, hey, Mom, I just want to let you know I'll be back at midnight. I'll see you later. Close the door. <laughs> now you got her confused. And you got her tripped up because now she doesn't know what to, how to respond because, wait a minute, I didn't get eye contact. Now, if your mom's still young, she'll chase you outside and tackle you and make sure you get to, oh, look at me, and you know. Dad's, Dad's got the recliner kicked up. You can go look Dad right in the face. What's Dad seeing? NHRA. My kids could come up to me. If I had drag racing on, my kids come up, hey, Dad, I want to go out and jump off a bridge, you know, or, or I want to go out and just shoot people and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, right. Four, four seconds. You see that car? Four seconds. Man, that's amazing. And the kid's like, we're going to ask Dad from now on. We can make eye contact with Dad, and he's just dead. Now, the one thing we did learn as parents is that when our kids would come and ask us something, we started learning, like, okay, that wasn't probably the best way to do things. Because for me to be supportive of my wife and my bride, we had to be on the same page. And I learned that the hard way. I did. We used to fight, we used to bicker, we used to carry on. Because we, we had this perception of the job they have. Okay, this is what you do. This is what I do. And I was raised up old school, so I mowed the lawn, I did the snow, I did everything outside the house. That's why I don't dust. <laughs> Karen doesn't dust my trash cans, I shouldn't have to dust her furniture. Yeah. And then Karen had this inside thing, but we were having problems with the kids because kids are slick, aren't they? Yeah. They'll come to dad, dad will say, well, what'd your mom say? Well, mom said to ask you, okay, I get, out, get out of my face, go ahead, you know. And then, you know, you sit down at the dinner table, kids aren't there, and your wife says, where's the kids at? Well, I thought you said it was all right for them to, I, I never told them that. I told them to go ask you if it was all right with you. Well, they told me, well, now we're in a fight. You know, we're in a fight, and our, our life was in turmoil. Finally, we kinda, it kind of clicked on us one day. It's like, you know, we need to communicate a little bit. And that really kills your kid. It's like, Mom and Dad talk? Uh-oh. <laughs> now how do we get away with stuff? Because, see, what I told my kids was, was this. I said, if your mother says no, and you come and ask me, I took that as a sign of disrespect. I said, if your mother said no, you come and ask me, you're getting spanked. Man, that takes care of some conniving, doesn't it? Especially when they try it once. I remember Ryan. Well, hey, Dad, I just want to let you know. Can I do it? What your mother say? Well, she said no. Get in the bedroom. She said, look on his face. Like, you're, like, you're for real? <laughs> I told you if your mother said no, you're going to honor your mother. You're going to respect your mother. If your mother said no, that was no. For you to come to me, try to get around her, that's not tolerated. In the bedroom you go. Now, that was one time he didn't get a lot of spankings on because he picked up on, okay, my dad says zero tolerance for disrespect for our mom. That was one thing that I picked out of the scripture, too, was the, the honor and respect that King Solomon showed this mom. It's like, it's almost like he already knew. Get me the sword. 
You know, I'm telling you what, I don't know who the mom is. I don't know. And once he got the answer, he honored that woman, didn't he? Give her the child. That's his. We need to honor our mothers. We need to cherish our mothers. They're not here forever. Some of them are gone already. Some of them have different things. I like hearing stories. And I know I'm all over this made. I like telling stories about moms. I heard one this morning just bless my heart. About a mom, you know, moms have stuff to take care of, but what do they do? They sit down. You're always their child. You ever notice that? You're always their baby. You're always your little, and, and some of you like, Mom, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I don't understand why I can't do what I want to do, and, and I can't, you know. It's in, in your mom's eyes, you're still her child. You're still your, her baby to take care of. But this mom sat on a sofa consoling her son. I thought that was just so neat. If she could have been doing other things, she could have been in the kitchen with her daughter-in-law, she could have been out sitting there just chilling out, getting close to Mother's Day and stuff like that, but the most important thing to her was to sit next to her son and bring him comfort. See how good God is? Just those neat stories. Moms just do what they do. Moms just know what you need. They do. So we need to honor our mothers. We need to love our moms. You know, I posted on Facebook. If your mom is still alive, you need to be calling her. You need to be contacting her. We'll get to Dad's Day in June. Because <laughs> you know something? Sometimes we don't realize what our moms really do until we're away from them. And sometimes when we're away from them, they think, we think they're not thinking of us. But you know what? When they come in our home, the first thing they're thinking of how they can take care of you. Wow. And amazing. Just like this mother here. The first thing, the only thing on her mind was taking care of her child. Not the fact that she could get her child back. But the fact that she loved her child enough that she wanted him to live. And she was so willing to give him away. That's only something a woman with a mother's heart would do. It takes more than just having children to have a mom's heart. It takes more than just knowing things but when you have a mother's heart guess what you just know what you know so when it comes to mother's day every year sometimes we take for granted because i know some of us say it's a hallmark moment <laughs> hallmark came up with this kind of thing no god created moms god created moms god created dads they're a special gift and they deserve better and more sometimes than what we give them Sometimes instead of trying to connive around them, you know, we ought to spend some time with them. When's the last time you sat down with your mom and just said, Hey, Mom, tell me some things you went through when you were a kid. How many have done that? Not many. Some of us don't have that opportunity, I understand. The one thing that you're going to learn from your mom, and that we take for granted, is she just wants to know you love her too. That just takes a moment, doesn't it? That just takes a moment. We have all this technology, all the cell phones, and all these kind of things, and yet I still hear people say, I ain't talked to my folks in three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. And I'm thinking, wow. Then we wait till Mother's Day. It's kind of like coming to church on Easter, isn't it? All right, it's Mother's Day. Now's my time to treat my mom really good. And they deserve to be treated really good. But what's wrong with the other days? In dads, that's where we need to step up. If your kids aren't stepping up, that's where the dad needs to come in and say, you know something? Let me share some stories with you what your mom did for you the least you could do. Now, that's not just a guilt thing. That's truth. Give your mom a call once in a while. Because if you're like me, I'm a dad, that, it's fine. I hear from my son once, what, every six weeks or something like that when he's doing what he's doing, and we're cool. I miss him, but, that, that, but I'm cool. When Karen misses a phone call from my son, I can see the look on her face. You know, her heart just goes into a different mode. And I try to feel that way, but I, I don't feel like she does. I don't. 
mom has a different kind of heart. And sometimes when we don't do just the little things back for her, we don't know whether it breaks her heart or not. Because moms aren't going to say nothing, are they? They're going to love you anyhow, aren't they? They're going to love you anyhow. That's the kind of picture this mom drew for me. I, like I said, we could have done a lot of different things. Well, they were prostitutes, and we could have went through this, we could have went through that. But I wanted you to see that moms just know. Why they know? Because they've been given a special gift. And right here's a prime example of a woman with a mother's heart. We know there are some out there don't. Sometimes we spend more attention on those, but the ones that do, love on them. Care for them. Show them that you, you remember them. It's not hard to do. The hardest thing for me now is that my mom doesn't remember. And it's hard. But I got her. Every once in a while, she'll pop out with an I love you. But you, want to make, you know what's amazing to me, though? Is that she looks me in the face when she says that. Isn't God good? You know, moms are just great. They really are. Take some extra moment to love on your moms today. Dads, make sure your kids love on your moms today. If your kids haven't called yet, you call them. Really? Well, I don't want to make my kids feel guilty. You know something? You ought to if they haven't called. Because <laughs> it's your responsibility to make sure that woman gets honored. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for her. What did he honor her? Man, that's, that's great what scripture says about women. They're to be honored. They're to be respected. They're to be loved. They're to be thought of more than once a year. <laughs> At least thought of one, more than once a year. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for moms. I thank you for the moms we have in this fellowship. Because, Father, I see moms. And especially when I was reading this scripture, Lord, it was going to be a, a, an easy message. Because we have moms in this church that have hearts. Father, not only for their own children, but, Father, for, the, for those of uh, children of other moms. It's great when we see children walk in here. And, Father, these Moms just love on them and care for them and spend time with them. I thank you for the women we have here. Bless them this day. Bless their families. Father, help us as those on the outside of her circle to see her heart. To be willing to look her in the face. To be willing to love her back. Father, to me, it's a picture of your Lord loving us so much that he gave his life for us. Moms sacrifice that much. They truly do. So, Father, as we leave this place, I just pray that uh, we just have a great time of family, a great time of fellowship, a great time of family -ship. But we're grateful that you've given us the mom you've given us. Let's not expect them to be somebody they're not. Let's not expect them to be someone else's mom or like someone else's mom because they're your mom and they're unique and we thank you. You gave us our mom for a purpose and a reason. Father, again, bless this day. And I pray that all we do and say would bring you honor, glory, and praise. But let's make some memories. Help us to make new memories special memories. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
God, my strength, as I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are faithful, God, forever, God, forever. Uh, Karen's going to come up and do the announcements. Just real quick, um, for just one thing I want to say is um, uh, most of you probably know, hopefully, you've been praying. Bernice Evans was in the hospital. Uh, she was released yesterday. She came home. Obviously, they're not here today. It might be a little while before they're here. But uh, we want to put together some meals for them. And where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Cheryl Reaver's going to head that up. So if you would like to be part of getting meals to Margie and Bernice, please get with Cheryl. Uh, she can get the food to them if you can. And she has a list of what it is that Bernice can and can't eat. So uh, we as her church family want to step up. And if we could provide four or five meals, nights worth of meals, just so that that's one less thing to have to deal with, we'd like to do that. So if God's put it on your heart to do that, please get with Cheryl. Okay, so this morning we want to honor our mother. What did I forget? I know. This morning, we're going to honor our mothers um, in two ways. Well, actually three. They get a gift bag, they get a flower, and one lady's going to go home with a hanging flower plant donated by Bella Clark. Okay. There we go. Cool. All right. There you go. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Okay, I need all the moms to stand because our children are going to give you a flower and a bag, okay? Flower. And get your bag for the skip. Can you go give it to Miss Jean right here? Go give it to Miss Jean. Come on, guys, come get your flower. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, mom. Give it to your mom. Mom, stand. Okay, here we go. bags were gone before the event even started. The girls ran out, made more blessing bags, and they were gone within 20 minutes of making them. I think we gave out 80-some. 
the by the end of the day. So this money that we're going to raise through the month of June in this water balloon challenge, I love you. Is we're going to then take that money and we're going to, we're going to make blessing bags to hand out in the name of Jesus. That's the idea of this fundraiser. So I uh, just want you to keep that in mind. We'll be starting that right after the morning. All right? Let's pray to close the service. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church and all you do in it. Lord, we thank you for those that are stepping up and lightening the load for those that run the church and make the church happen. Lord, you're just blessing us. Father, we pray for Margie and Bernice and all the rest that aren't here today, Father, to stay as your blessings pour out upon them. Lord, may you be glorified every day through our lives and to give us traveling mercies as we leave this place. And Lord, again, we thank you for each and every mom that you've put in our lives. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.